Okay, so continuing on with our review of assumptions and uh, associated with our regression uh, analysis, uh, now what we're going to do is we are going to look for potential influential cases uh, in, the, um, in our data. So in other words, we're looking for cases that might have had sort of an undue influence on the model as a whole uh, or particular, and or particular um, parameters within our regression model. So specifically, we're going to focus on looking at, uh, we're going to use Cook's D, uh, and we're also going to use uh, DF fits and DF betas in order to uh, look for potential influential cases. So, you know, keep in mind that uh, it, it is possible that, you know, really what we're looking for in general uh, are for our cases, or what we're seeking when we run our regression is for all the cases to add um, relatively equivalent amounts of information when it comes to um, generating our, our um, uh, prediction model. And what we don't want are cases, you know, that are um, having a, a strong, uh, an unusually strong impact uh, because that means that the model is being weighted uh, in, in favor of those um, particularly influential cases and it's not um, taking into account all of the cases uh, at the same level. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look start we're going to start off by using Cook's D as one strategy for evaluating um, or identifying potential influential cases uh, associated with our uh, regression uh, an analysis results. So to do that, um, you know, kind of you going back to our little um, um, worksheet here. Um, to, to detect uh, influential cases using Cook's D, uh, basically what we, what we need to do is create a new variable for our data set, like we've done before in the previous videos. We're going to use predict, uh, and then I'm just going to give it give a new the new variable the name D, and then comma, and then Cook's D. So basically, I'm just going to uh, plug that in here into the command line. Um, so again, this doesn't, you know, the D is just the name of the variable. I could have called it anything. I could have called it actually anything if I wanted to. And th just so long as I am creating the new variable for uh, this going to be in the data set. So I'm going to um, put that in, hit enter, and, and, you know, sometimes this kind of thing can happen. Uh, it, it looks like that occasionally uh, the program kind of kind of forget about the fact that you ran a regression way earlier and um, can kind of forget. Basically, we're trying to generate a new variable D or Cook's D uh, based on the regression results. And so, um, and so, you know, we, I, in the last couple of videos, we've been spending a lot of time looking at variables that are included in the data set already, and it looks like it's sort of lost its memory for the original regression equation. So I'm just going to go ahead and reanalyze uh, the data. I'm going to type in regress, and then, um, you know, kind of going back, I'm just going to move gender back over, um, subject matter interest, mastery goals, and anxiety, all of those over, and uh, just hit enter. So now I've regenerated the model, and then I'm just gonna, now I'm gonna type in uh, predict D, Cook's D, oops, not Cook's D. And there you go. And so now I have in my data set a new variable called D. And um, so essentially then I'm looking for, there, there are various rules of thumb. One rule of thumb that I came across is um, that uh, Lomax and Hasbon kind of suggested in their textbook is you're looking for cases that have a D value that's greater than one. But um, another uh, source, um, you know, suggests that uh, basically uh, a, a different kind of way of uh, deciding on a threshold for what constitutes an influential case. And uh, that basically involved, um, you know, taking four and dividing by the sam sample size in and then using that as our uh, criterion. So uh, let's just kind of, we'll, we'll do, we'll, we'll look at, at this uh, both ways. So we'll say, well, I'm going to take four. We had 50 cases in our data set. So it would be, um, you know, an influential case would be one uh, with a D value that's uh, 0.08 or, or greater, I guess. So uh, in this case right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, say sort D. 
Okay, and then when I hit enter, then th that uh, D variable in the data set has been sorted from in a in an ascending fashion. So you know, if I want to look at the data set, if I go to a data editor browse right here, you can see at the end of the data set is D and it's sorted all the cases on this from low to high. And so you can see that uh, the highest D values were for uh, this case uh, at 0.08 and um, in this case at 0.182. So it's case uh, uh, I, uh, observe, um, students that had an, uh, uh, student number 27 and student number seven, um, basically had, uh, were, would be deemed as influential in terms of affecting our regression results. Uh, if I didn't want to do that, if I didn't want to open up the data file and sort it, uh, look at things that way, then I could also say list ID D, which is the, the name of the variable. And I could say n, and you know you're probably not going to get a, a, a huge number of um, of um, extreme, uh, you know, or influential cases. So let's say I just wanted to select the the ten high, the cases that had the uh, ten highest uh, Cook's D value. So I could type in n forty one fifty, and then that just gives me you know essentially on that sorted variable uh, the Cook's D variable, this would be essentially the, um, the, the highest 10 of the Cook's D values. So you can see that basically using um, the, the threshold of one, uh, none of the cases would be deemed as particularly influential. But if we use um, this um, threshold uh, by taking four divided by the sample size, we would have two cases that would be deemed as uh, potentially influential. So, and those, and that would basically be the, the students that with the ID, uh, who have a student ID of 27 or 7 in the data set. Um, okay, another um, strategy for identifying potential influential cases is the use of D fits and, or DF fits. And um, basically, um, this would be another way of kind of looking overall at the model. Uh, or looking at how a case kind of affects the overall model. And so uh, you can see this is the command that I'm using right here. Uh, so I'm just saying predict, and then this is the name of a new variable that's been created in uh, Stata. And then this is the command that um, for generating the DF fits um, data. So in this particular case, I'm just gonna copy and paste this over. It's a little easier than just simply typing. And now when I hit enter, you can see the, the variable appears right here. So now that's in the data set. So again, kind of looking at the data editor, browse, you can see, scrolling over, there are the DF fits. And so you can see we've got some values that are negative, some are positive. And so the rules of thumb concerning uh, this particular um, variable in terms of identifying uh, influential cases really concerns the absolute value of those DF fits. So what I'm going to do is I am going to generate a new variable uh, in the data set that is the absolute value of those, uh, the original DF fits variables. And then I'm going to sort it and then use the rule of thumb to identify uh, potential influential cases. So in this particular case, uh, what I will do is I'm just going to type in generate and then I'm say the new variable is called ABS. Um, again, this is any name that I want, but this is just kind of me being particularly descriptive. And I'm going to say equals and then ABS and then DF fits, which is the name of the original variable. So I'm, I'm converting this variable into a new variable that's, that is the absolute value of that original variable. Okay, so now I'm going to put it, that in parenthesis. And then I'll hit enter. And so now I've got in my data set this new variable, which is the absolute value of the DF fits. And then, um, you know, again, I can either, you know, go into the data set using my little rule of thumb, or I can just use the sort command and list commands to, to, to get what I want. Um, so in terms of kind of a rule of thumb for evaluating, um, um, you know, influential cases using this particular index, um, you know, you can see that we have um, essentially two times the square root of the number of predictors K divided by N. So the number of uh, predictors in our model 
um, was, let's see, I think it was 4, right? So we're going to take 4 divided by uh, 50, which was our sample size. That gives us uh, 0 0.08, okay? And then we're going to take the square root of that, which is 0 0.282 or 0 0.283, and then we're going to multiply that times 2. And so our threshold then for evaluating an influential case on the abs on the absolute value of those d of fits is point roughly 0.57. So again, I can go in here and go under data editor, and I can do it this way, but I'd probably want to sort first. But I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to say sort, and then um, take uh, this this variable right here and move it down here. Okay, so I'm going to sort on that first. So like I said, if I wanted to use that threshold, if I wanted to go into the data set, I could certainly do it. It's a little bit of a pain, but not, not too bad if I just scroll down. And you know, remember, our threshold was about 0.57. So you can see we've got these two cases right here that would be uh, influential. And so those would be uh, the cases for 27 and 7, which are the really the same ones that we identified previously with the Cook's D. Um, but, you know, if I didn't want to do it that way, I could certainly use the list command. I could say list abs v d f -f bits. If I just did it that way, I get the entire list. And this is kind of recalling all of the data. Um, and so, you know, you can see there, there are those last two. Um, if I wanted the actual ID name uh, then uh, included in there, then I could say, you know, list uh, ID along with that and so then that tells me which students had the um, you know di uh, different levels of influence in terms of their observations um, and then if I just wanted to identify this a subset with the largest um, uh, absolute values of those DF fits then I could just easily say list ID ABS v, v, F, F, I, P, S, and and I'll just do the last 10 and so those are them right here. And so there's uh, these two students with, with the highest values on that. So as you can see, it looks like that in general, we're, we're looking at cases number um, uh, students uh, with the ID numbers of 27 and seven, those are uh, exhibiting some particular, particular influence on our regression results. Um, so they're having a little bit more impact than the other cases in data set. Now we can also, so this is kind of looking at the influence on the model as in general, uh, but if we want to look at the influence on the individual regression coefficients, we can also use the DF betas. Uh, and so this is kind of looking at, you know, if that case was not included, what would be the effect on the regression coefficients um, or on a given regression coefficient. So to accomplish this, uh, we would just generate uh, we would use uh, DF beta uh, command, and then the name of the independent variable would be uh, listed um, actually in parenthesis, and then we would have the DF beta uh, for, um, basically we would just have to create a new variable that's reflecting the DF beta for a given um, predictor or independent variable within the model. So um, I'm just going to, again, I'm going to copy this off because very easy to um, mistype something. So I'm going to say DF beta, and I'm just going to, I like to give it a name. That's why I had the IV there. It wasn't required, but I could say DF beta 1 if I want, or I could say DF beta for, um, you know, subject matter interest or something like that. Just kind of put it all together in, into one big var variable if I want to. SMI there. And then uh, DF beta, and then in parenthesis, I'll just put the uh, name of the original variable. So you got to make sure that's in there. So just keep in mind that this is the command with the name of the original variable. So we're going to generate uh, the DF beta values uh, for each case with respect to the regression coefficient for subject matter interest. And this is the name of the new variable that will appear in the data set as a result. So I'm going to hit enter, and so now you can see it appears um, in, our, uh, in our data set. Uh, and so then we can do all the sorting and everything in the same ways uh, that we've done uh, before.